Welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Dr. Sarah Penny from Hamilton Health and Wellness Center Hi. up on the Hamilton Mountain, and uh, you are a naturopathic doctor. I am, yes. So let's, uh, to some people, are say, okay, I, I've heard that maybe I should go to one, but what does that mean, and, and what is different uh, about a naturopathic doctor? Yeah, so yeah, that's a common source of confusion. Mm -hmm. So as a naturopathic doctor, I'm a primary care provider, which means I see all the same concerns as a family doctor does, okay. but I have a different set of tools that I use to encourage health in my patients. So. Uh -huh. um, uh, the tools I use as a naturopath are uh, clinical nutrition. Okay. I talk to people a lot about how what they eat every day affects their health, and I do use supplements when appropriate, but mm -hmm. I personally recognize the importance of not um, having a patient take five supplements five times a day, as I couldn't right. even do that myself. Right. Um, I also use Asian medicine and acupuncture. That's something people are, are very interested in, I find. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Acupuncture is, of course, the insertion of very fine needles into certain points in the body to um, affect kind of energetic balances from a traditional Chinese medicine perspective. Mm -hmm. I also, also use acupuncture puncture in a more stick it where it hurts approach. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it amazingly works. <laughs> it actually yeah. does. I've seen great results for pain relief. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also use uh, botanical medicine, so using herbs as medicine in the form of um, teas, powders, capsules, wow. or something called tinctures, which are a concentrated liquid extract of a herb in an alcohol base. And that's amazing because that stuff's very powerful and Definitely. you have to really know what you're doing when you're messing around with that stuff, right? Yeah, especially <laughs> when people are on medications. Well, absolutely. Um, and that's the part where you can introduce like contraindications and everything, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I also talk to all my patients about um, kind of more lifestyle counseling so talking about their stress levels their sleeping habits mm. their exercise habits and so that's really nowadays. important for our long-term health yeah absolutely and it is and that's something to recognize so um, again there's just so many way a, a different approach really mm -hmm. right it's a different side of things and Definitely. and sometimes in conjunction with your regular doctor can work as absolutely well, right? yeah I always like to make clear that there's and I'm in no way against conventional medicine and it, it is definitely very important in many situations yeah definitely work with medical doctors when that's I can. great and that and that's even better because now you're just you have a, a huge force behind you yeah. that can help you versus just one side of things. Right? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. why don't we talk about some of the uh, typical nutrients that people are lacking and, and how we can get them into our bodies and what they do for our bodies, just to give some examples yeah. of what we have here. Yeah, certainly. So um, a lot of the time what I see, I get patients to do a diet diary after the first visit. Yeah. Every visit. A lot of people hate doing that. That's going to be interesting, um, right? Because yeah. some people are probably trying to be extra good. <laughs> I had lots of salmon today and, and you're like, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I always tell them I'm not judging them, and I just want them to tell the truth. Yeah, so that's we can help really improve their health. And so, um, <laughs> a lot of what I see is people are are focusing on um, a lot of processed foods in their diet, which are mm -hmm. often very nutrient. Um, depleted and mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. aren't getting enough fiber enough protein um, enough fruits and vegetables so right. those are the things I counsel my patients on increasing in their diet okay and because you're also adding a lot of sugars and sodiums and things to your body that you don't need definitely well, and right? preservatives and yes so it's like off okay. yeah so exactly. let's move over to obviously we know we need some healthy greens but um, you have some different ones here that maybe some people wouldn't necessarily recognize like yeah. this guy. So I have some uh, some great greens here. This mm -hmm. one is actually called a collard green. Mm -hmm. um, so there are lots of different kind of soup recipes you can use for this, but mm -hmm. one of my favorites is actually using it uh, to make wraps instead of a white flour wrap. You layer two leaves, wash them well, layer two leaves, and just kind of wrap like a little chickpea salad or a quinoa salad mm -hmm. up in it, or mm -hmm. even kind of chicken or whatever you right. want. Right, absolutely. There's lots of options, and uh, and it doesn't. It actually has a pretty nice taste to it. It's yeah, not mild. Yeah, right. It's not. It's, some people associate certain certain grains with bitterness, but mm -hmm. this is, that's actually a great idea. And then again, you're also cutting back on um, if you're cutting back on gluten or carbs in general, then it, this is going to help you on that front as well. Yeah, and you're certainly. getting so much from this. Yeah, definitely in terms of nutrients, breath right. with nutrients. Exactly. Okay, and? Kale. kale. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this is everybody's favorite by now. Kale is kind of the emerging uh, superfood yeah. of food. People are getting in their face, right? Okay, you yeah, can eat definitely. kale. <laughs> so uh, kale is very rich in many nutrients. Yeah. Um, yeah, general phytonutrient, antioxidants, um, fiber, iron. And so there's lots of different ways you can prepare kale. You mm -hmm. can kind of lightly saute it with a little bit of um, olive oil and garlic. But the one thing I found when cooking kale is um, it does taste a little bit better if you rub it first. Yes, I've heard about that. Under so you're kind of breaking water. it down. Bit, right? Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. just kind of making it a bit softer. Yep. Um, the other thing I like to do is just kind of make a kale salad and putting a nice dressing on it, I can almost eat a whole head full of kale. Yeah, and, and how great is that, right? <laughs> it's, because it's wonderful, that's yeah. the problem is a lot of people are like, what, how do I eat kale? Exactly. How do I get any, And again, you can also put it into a juice, into a yeah. smoothie, a yeah. blender, right? And or kale chips is great now, kale too. Kale chips, too. Yeah. Okay, very good. <laughs> And we have beets. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> beets are uh, are specifically kind of uh, 
one that I picked out for liver health. So okay. beets contain a compound called betaine, which, is, which uh, boosts our production of antioxidants in the liver. Mm -hmm. Any kind of bright root vegetables or bright, bright fruits and vegetables in general mm -hmm. are generally high in um, antioxidants and helpful nutrients for our body. Okay, okay, so good stuff to know. Now let's moving on a little bit over here. Mm -hmm. And um, so people looking at this are like, okay, what is this? <laughs> That's turmeric. Yeah. yeah, so how does this help you? So um, turmeric is a wonderful anti-inflammatory spice. I use it a lot for inflammation in patients with uh, inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's actually best absorbed in an oil base, so mm -hmm. I often recommend people mix it with a little bit of olive oil and honey to taste okay. and use it use it as a little paste and take it like that. Oh. Um, turmeric is also actually very good for liver health. It's mm -hmm. been shown in animal studies to help regenerate liver cells when they're damaged by things like fatty liver, which a lot of us experience nowadays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. And a little bit of fiber. Yeah, so <laughs> what I've got here is um, flaxseed. Flaxseed is definitely my fiber of choice. It has some healthy omega-3 oils in it, um, but a common misconception I want to clear up is that the omega-3s in flax are kind of equal to the omega-3s in fish. Okay. They're two different forms, and our body actually absorbs the omega-3s in fish a lot better than, than plant sources. Oh. So that's an important distinction to make, but it is a, still a very healthy still food. And, source for you. and uh, what I love using it for is uh, fiber. Mm -hmm. So it, it provides both soluble and insoluble fiber, but you always want to have the flaxseed ground because we don't naturally break down flaxseed uh -huh. when we eat it. Okay, <laughs> right, that's right. Okay, yeah, the seed will just go right through you. Exactly. <laughs> See you on the other end. Okay, so yeah. lemon also uh, another part of it, this is actually helps a little bit cleansing of the body, right? Exactly, yeah. So lemons are great for a few different reasons. Um, first of all, that kind of bitter taste is very important for your liver health again. Mm -hmm. So squeezing about an eighth of a lemon into water, it doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. I usually cut it up and keep it in the fridge and mm -hmm. just take a fresh piece out and squeeze it in. Yep. That bitter helps um, stimulate the release of a digestive enzyme called bile into our intestine. Mm -hmm. Bile contains a lot of the toxins that our liver right. processes and that's the way of um, of our bodies to get rid of that bile, it goes into the into the gut for excretion. Very so, um, yeah, stimulating the digestive system is, is a good role. Of so we're talking about a little bit. Um, you know, so I, mean, I could talk to you probably for the next couple of hours, but we're running out of time. <laughs> um, a little bit of spring detox tips for people and how they can get rid of some of the stuff that some of the habits they picked up maybe over the winter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what should yeah. we do? What should we take out of our bodies right now and put in? So um, all of these things, right? Yeah, definitely. So it's nice to go into uh, summer with a clean slate, mm -hmm. and, and spring is really a time of growth and renewal and regeneration in, in nature so we like to do that in our body too mm -hmm. so I often recommend for kind of a spring detox that people go on uh, a two to three week uh, cleanse of sorts and I'm not talking about a colon cleanse or mm -hmm. a juice fast or any kind of fast you can really help support your body with these nutrients just by um, taking out certain things from your diet in, in a for a short period of time yeah um, yeah two of the main things I know you mentioned gluten and dairy are yep. two things that I recommend people go off for a short period of time okay. just to give their body a break and um, coffee and alcohol are, are two other ones. That, there you uh, go. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to have you back yeah. on the show because we run out of time. But Dr. Sarah Penny, again, in the Hamilton Mountain uh, Hamilton Health and Wellness Center. Yeah, Thank you so much. Right. We'll be back with more Tara at Home.